Well, welcome back to the garden, friends. Hadn't had a tour in a while, and things have really started changing around here. The old watermelons, which I didn't think would ever decide to come up, have been doing well. And I don't know if you remember me telling you about these little cucamelons, but they look like a watermelon. But they're real little, and only about, oh, about that big around, and uh, tastes like a cucumber. So they call them cucumelons. I'm gonna start training that little man to come up here. But I built me a little bit different little hoop arch for it to go around. I had those round cages, and they didn't look so good, so. I changed that around to see if we can't get them to grow up over that a little bit better. Cantaloupes are really taking off. They're on both sides of the trellis. I got lots of blooms on them. Hopefully they'll climb right on up there. And we'll have a whole lot of cantaloupes in a few more weeks. Tomatoes really taking off too. These are the yellow sweet 100s they got little clusters all up and down so they're doing well they've got so high i've had to kind of trim them back a little because i don't want them to get out of the cage too much this one is the cherokee purple and we've got a few little ones on it there's one there and then there's a couple, if you can see them, right over in there. Uh, I don't know if I'm getting to them or not. Anyway, they're looking well. <clears throat> Here's the black cherries. They're also a small tomato like the yellow sweet 100s. They're getting quite a few little clusters on them as well this is my Abraham Lincoln the plant itself hadn't got too big but it's got a couple of nice tomatoes coming on it down there and we'll go around here to this row of tomatoes this one is the uh, delicious and it's the one that had the tomatoes on it when it was real little, those three there. And so they've stayed on and grown. Got a couple of more there, got one there. And it too is about to fill in the cage. This one here is the carbon and it's Got lots of blooms on it, and one tomato. See if I can get in in focus there. There it is. So it's doing well. Hey, young lady, what are you doing out here? And then this is the Abraham Lincoln. It's getting on up pretty tall and. Got some tomatoes coming on it. Yes, ma'am. What do you want? And then this one is the Sioux. And then it has quite a few tomatoes on it as well. And coming on up the side of the cage. Here's the other <coughs> side of the cantaloupes. If you can see the arch there. Maybe. These are going to grow up this side, and hopefully these will grow up this side, and they'll meet in the middle. But they're looking well. They've got lots of pretty vines on them, lots of blooms on them. There's a shot of them from that angle. And then the other side of the ones coming up there. And here again is where I was a minute ago with the watermelons. Now we've also got 
Uh, these are all sunflowers. They won't get too much bigger. Well, these will. <laughs> I don't know why that one is uh, so big and this one is, but the rest of them, they're all supposed to be the same. And then over here, of course, I planted the okra. And it's coming up. It's in a row right down through there. I think I've got about 20, 20 something plants. So it should produce well. And then this one, I didn't plant any sunflowers, so I doubled up on it with the, the okra. This is the morning glory, same morning glories that I have on the arch, but I just put a little trellis here for them. And they're doing quite well. They're climbing right on up. I haven't put any blooms on yet, but they're supposed to be different colors and be pretty when they get on up. Here's one of the hanging baskets that I got. The plant almost dead on the clearance and put it in here. It's doing well. Here's the other trellis where Porky and Billy are watching over everything. And these on the outer edge are gonna be sunflowers as well, as you can see. They're only gonna get up about two feet tall though. So they won't get too much bigger than that. And then the morning glories finally did come up and they're starting to wrap around. And hopefully they'll climb right on up here. And on this side, I've got more morning glories, which are also starting to climb up. And more sunflowers going on. And I've got a cat over there that's uh, enjoying the day out here, I guess. Yeah, I see you. I haven't had very much success with the beans. I planted them and some of them came up real nice. This is probably the way all of them should look. But then others either didn't come up at all or they were just real mm, kind of like this one right here. Just real puny. So I went ahead and planted the rest of the seeds. There's one coming up that I had planted last week. And I'm hoping this second time around that they're gonna do better. I planted all, <clears throat> all of this row here, but it's only been a few days. I think I planted them maybe back last week sometime. So, uh, hopefully they'll come up and if they do maybe between all of it I'll have enough pole beans green beans these will be bush beans so they'll be green beans that I'll be able to enjoy them this is the other hanging basket the red one you see the other one on that end and then Billy and Porky and then I had to move this one out I had it on the other side of the shed but as you can see maybe there's a lot of shade over there on that side of the shed so it didn't seem to be doing as well although it's still not blooming quite as well what have you got in here little man we don't want that in there okay so I'm hoping that it'll maybe do a little bit better in the sun. The blackberries are just about to go away. I've still got a few of them here. Mm. They're still good. But I'm getting to where I'm picking less and less of them. So, once all the berries are gone, you see how growed up that is down in there with grass. It looks really bad. 
I'm gonna get in there once the berries are out and I'm gonna pull all that grass and weeds and whatever out of there and then I'm gonna go up to the where I get my truckload of mulch with the city you can get a pickup truck full free and then I'll remulch that down through there I don't know if I've showed y'all my uh, irrigation little deal here but I've got it programmed one of them I'm putting on 10 minutes a day or twice a day and the other one I've got on five minutes the tomatoes because they're holding plenty of water being in a barrel type form like they are but these beans and the okra which are in the long uh, barrels they don't tend to get as much water so you see they're a little bit wetter yesterday I started running them 10 minutes twice a day and these I'm just running five minutes twice a day but they're getting plenty of water obviously or they wouldn't be doing as well as they are there's the old windmill hadn't had to turn too much here lately we haven't had very much wind this is the bed with the impatiens in it uh, it's doing a whole lot better but it's still not grown completely together but they're looking good um, got the soaker hose in there and I've been using it about maybe once or twice a week and so they're blooming real well I've been putting the super bloom on them every couple of weeks and uh, the fish emulsion on all the vegetables every couple of weeks and it seems to be helping out keeping them looking good this of course is the shade bed which is not so much in the shade right now will be in a little bit but this time of the day the sun's coming down on it pretty good and the dahlias are doing yeah pretty good this one is about the prettiest one here and then I've got some more coming down in yet the wind got bad the other day so I took these little green tomato cages that I have and I tried to set them over it I don't know what I'm gonna do with the gladiolas you can see they're already laying down from the wind so anyway we'll worry about that when it comes around these hostas my mom gave me when I went down there and they were just in one big pot and I split them up and put those in the bare spots where those freesia never came up I don't know what the deal was on that but they never came up those bulbs so now that kind of evened it out got some flowers and some greenery and hopefully some of the gladiolas will fill in a little bit too I don't know if I've showed you guys the front uh, ever or in a while but this is the front of the house and the bed that I've got under the big maple tree here it used to be all sun until I planted that about 10 or 15 years ago so I've had to kind of shift the plants in here into more shade plants these two on the end are crepe myrtles and then I've got a little hodgepodge of the monkey grass and some of the irises I had put in earlier <laughs> and these sunflowers just kind of volunteered back up on their own I'm hoping they're going to be the pretty ones I had some a couple of years ago that were orange and red and so maybe that's what these will be I didn't want to pull them up I just let them stay growing and find out what they are mystery sunflowers and these are the roses I had moved from the shade bed back there when I made it they never really did too well back there but they did actually bloom and they are growing they're putting on new growth this one is doing pretty good so I'm hoping maybe I'm putting a super bloom on them as well maybe they'll bloom again uh, here you know during the summer 
at some point. And this is the corner bed. I had a uh, crepe myrtle here a few years ago. In fact, that's it right there. I moved it over to, to kind of even that bed out with the one on the other end. And then I had a butterfly bush that I put in last year. And I guess the winter killed it because in the spring it was nothing but a stick. And so mom gave me a rose when I went down there. It was in a pot. And I kind of thought, oh, well, it's not looking very well. I planted it in the ground about a week ago. But as you can see, there's new growth coming on it. Some over there. So I'm hoping that it'll keep growing and fill in this whole area here. And then I'll have the green uh, monkey grass, lariope, and then have this fill that in eventually. Now I want to take you to a project that I'm working on as the weather gets hot and I've already got the irrigation system going I won't be able or have much need to stay out here so I'll show you what I'm doing in the shed I started to set me up a little shop out here for my woodworking tools and uh, some shelves which I haven't got to yet but anyway i'm getting it going of course as you know i got air conditioning in here so that makes it nice in the hot weather and basically this is <laughs> what i've got looking fairly good uh back here where i did have my area that i worked and i still have a lot of stuff in here i'm going to leave this uh work area here so that if I'm working on like gas or grease or something that'd be bad, messy, I can, this table's already, this bench is already, you know, kind of messed up. So if I'm working on yard equipment or something like that, this will still be uh, an area that I can use. This was where all those, all of those <laughs> were at. So you can see what just small area that I had to work in here and so what this is going to be is I'm going to close that hole up I had a fan in here one time and I'm going to put shelves and all the stuff that's in my garage that's on the shelves the weed eater and other assorted blowers and things I'm going to put them there and I'm also going to put my gas uh, mower and my gas and stuff like that in here <clears throat> because once I close this door and close up that hole then that won't stink in here it'll be closed in and I can um, use this area then for the wood shop and being able to do projects like that with uh, the router I really like that the the bench fit in right there over the window because that'll give me a whole lot of light plus the light over me that I can see better. And then, of course, to get up in the loft, we have the attic ladder that I can pull down and start going up. And when we get up to the top, we have the loft which I still got to clean up, put the vacuum in, goes all the way around and back down through there. And I'm going to use it for things that I don't really use, like some of this extra lumber that's down here, get it up out of the way and uh, whatever else that I see that I really don't need, but I don't want to get rid of it either. Don't need it right away. And, of course, to put this back up, you just fold it up like that. And then you take this, and it goes.
goes right up in there. And that's how you get to the loft, which is all the way across there. So, kind of excited about that. I'll be putting a lot of shelves along here to put different tools or storage or whatever. And then I've got the cabinets here already. Most of the things in the cabinets are pertinent to the garden. The uh, fertilizer I have and bone meal, other things like that, so that I can have easy access to them when I come in here to do whatever gardening. That over there in the corner is what I was talking about, putting up top any, you know, extra wood. I've got some also back there that I'm going to take out before I put my uh, yard tools in there. And then the ladders, I haven't really decided. I've got both ladders where I can put them. I'll have to have easy access because I use them quite a bit. Of course, this is my router and bandsaw and the drill press. And as I do more work, I'll probably add some tools to that. Looking out the window, you can see the shade bed there and the shed bed underneath. So, got the view out the window of those. And so, that's about it now. We're just waiting on the produce to start coming in. Do a little more fertilizing and keep the plants pruned as much as possible. And hope that we'll get watermelons, cantaloupes, tomatoes, okra, and hopefully if they come up, some beans over there. So, till the next time, we'll see you.